Hey, Vamsi, welcome. Hey, what's up? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I'm doing good too. Thank you for joining our uh, session today. I'm very excited to yeah. <laughs> share your journey excited. Yeah, with our yeah. followers. So, Vamsi, I mean, I think your career seems very interesting and good for people to know, but I know it a little bit, but you share your career journey with uh, uh, viewers first. Yeah, uh, so I started uh, out of college in a edutech company called uh, Next Education. So uh, there I used to do mostly Java based stuff. Uh, I was working on an attendance system or something. And after that, I sh uh, after nine months or so, I thought that I should explore more stuff. So I went into a fintech based company. From there, uh, so in that fintech fintech based company, it was all about credit score and stuff. So it was around 2018 or something. And while I was in the fintech company, I got introduced to like uh, the crypto trading stuff initially. Like I was trading crypto and I got introduced to Bitcoin and Ethereum at that time. I So an, a very interesting story is that uh, in 2014, when I was in the college itself, uh, me and my friend tried to like um, explore Bitcoin and we, uh, one of my friends just uh, turned on Bitcoin mining on his laptop and we were expecting like uh, we will get some amount of money out of it. But uh, then we got to know like it, it does not work like that. Like, you need a lot of computing and stuff. And that's where like I first was introduced into like what is Bitcoin and stuff and what, what is like what are thoughts about Bitcoin in general. And from there I lost sight of it. And then again in 2017 or 18 it again popped up. Uh, then after that, I was not still into like coding and stuff in uh, Web3. So at that point, I used to uh, trade a lot. But after a certain point in 2017, or, sorry, 18 minutes, there was a huge uh, decline in price of Bitcoin. And that's when I like stopped trading because I like lost, I think, two or three Bitcoins at that point uh, while trading. So at that point, I stopped. And then... Uh, the same friend of mine, uh, we were living together in Hyderabad actually in India. Uh, so he was also working in a company in Hyderabad. I was in this fintech company and he, he, he had a random idea that I, I will just start uh, coding in crypto and I'll just uh, take a break for two or three months and just start giving interviews and stuff. And at that point, that guy went into uh, Polygon. At Polygon was a very, very a uh, small company at that time, I'd say, uh, because at that point, there were like four developers, all OG people, like uh, uh, OG people, like I think at that point, they used to operate from a, from a bungalow in uh, Bangalore. So, so that was quite interesting. Uh, maybe we can share that story some other time, but yeah. Uh, so, so at that point, that guy went to Singapore and then came back, uh, started giving interviews for uh, this thing, uh, for Matic, for other crypto companies in India. And at that point, only uh, two or three uh, companies were building like actual Web3 companies because all of the other companies had like very niche, not, not very uh, UX or not very big thought projects, like thought out projects. Like Polygon was the only Indian company at that point building a chain, I think. So, so from there, uh, at some given point, and uh, I was in that company for so quite some time, the fintech company, and I, and during the pandemic, uh, the company uh, was getting closed down a bit, and then after that, uh, I messaged my the other friend who was in Polygon that uh, I'll 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 also try to come into it. So I was introduced to Anurag. Uh, Anurag is a co-founder of Polygon. So from there, uh, Anurag had a few questions regarding blockchain. Uh, I had a little bit of idea about how the working is about and stuff. So I started there. Then the interview went off like he. So the interview was very relaxed to be honest. So I would consider myself lucky because at that point I was not asked a lot of crypto or like uh, Web three related stuff. I would say. Uh, it was all very basic stuff. And because at that point, I think what was happening was people were learning about Web3. So people were 
really just starting to look at web3 as a uh place to work for or place to work in so at that point everyone was still reaching out to web2 people and trying to bring in people teach them stuff tell them about bitcoin tell them about other things right now right now i think uh, in 2023 a lot of people already are in web3 and have a lot of domain specific knowledge right, right now at that point it was a little different and then he saw my work uh, for a company called penium which was basically a marketplace for bags and stuff so i was the sole developer there so i had created front end back end everything from scratch so that got that's how anurag took me in been looking at that project and uh that i think the only question that he asked was uh, are you the only sole developer for this and that's where i think i cracked the interview so that's how i started and then uh, once you're into po- uh, not into polygon but any web3 company um i think a lot of people try to come in as front end developers so i started as a back end developer from from the start so at that point front end developers were quite a lot but back end developers were quite less so i would say like starting from back end helped me a lot to be very honest because uh, a lot of like from from outside perspective from what i think is people outside believe that everything is smart con- smart contracts and stuff in uh, web3 but it's not like that uh, it's actually um, more hey, of hey, infra hey, rather than you, you are frozen a little bit um are you there your your hello you is frozen right now your camera yes. much much better okay <laughs> <laughs> okay good the background is better too yeah i was sitting on a bean chair before that yeah okay okay cool so we stopped at you were saying that there were a lot of front-end developers by then and you had an advantage as a back-end developer maybe you can take it from there and we can continue yeah uh mr recording still on yeah yeah it is still recording okay okay so uh yeah so, so after that uh having an edge because uh on back-end you're ideally uh already looking at rpcs and stuff so the major component is basically how you interact with the blockchain so most of the front end developers are mostly concerned on the ui interactions and how you just connect to the wallet and the wallet is basically uh, doing all the interaction for you so on the back end you are basically uh, the first project i was given was i think uh, building out an indexer uh, so indexer is basically catching stuff from all the transactions and just showing it up on the ui uh, so basic api stuff so but at that point i got to know like how to uh, decode events decode stuff on blockchain so at that point uh, i built out like even now i, I think it should be like staking not polygon not technology so that is basically the ui where you stake matic and stuff so that's how i was introduced first to the uh back end side of things and then i started looking into more deeper stuff uh so i was introduced to the network team who like built out the blockchain network and the uh pieces of like how how validators come into the come into place how the bridging works from ethereum to polygon and stuff so at that point i was uh, responsible for finding out how to uh how to relate two transactions one on polygon one on ethereum so you can think of like uh, ethereum and polygon or any blockchain as uh, as a walled garden so they have no interaction or no way to look outside so what happens there is uh, once you do something on ethereum validators take it from there listening to ethereum and then something is done on polygon so to relate both of these things i had to develop a method which was basically decoding everything from the contract on ethereum and then decoding everything on polygon and that's how basically you get deep into stuff so basically i would say like uh get trying to be as open as possible thinking not thinking about uh do i feel dumb asking this question or something that, that should not be in your mind so i think that's the first thing that you should everyone coming into web3 should think about because that's a basically a very big blocker i see 
people coming into crypto ask does do not not asking things that's a very bad thing so i think that's a good thing to have uh the other thing i would suggest people coming into crypto is not going into google and searching for stuff because a lot of people so basically from what i see crypto is still a still in, in its native state so a lot of stuff is happening uh throughout web3 so what 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 the information is mostly at max in forums or on twitter so how do you find these forums you have to be on twitter you can't google this stuff up and then come so follow good accounts follow people who have been on web3 from like 7 8 years 3 4 years at least start finding stuff that interests you start finding things about what are the difference between what are the differences between working of things in different blockchains and stuff so most of this information is on twitter and you will find like very good threads and tweets and stuff and that's how i got very deep to be very honest because i was there in polygon for like 9 months or so and then uh i got i i i actually after pandemic i went to bangalore so at that time i met a guy who was like uh the first employee of polygon and he was like starting a company so uh i was i was I, i was fortunately staying with him as a black mode so that's uh, that actually played it and played played as an advantage because uh if i had stayed in polygon like polygon had a very uh, at that point i was at polygon when polygon was like in its growth stage a lot of people coming in a lot of being people building so at that time i started looking at what this guy is building and he was like into uh the next part of iteration of web3 i think which is basically interaction between blockchains so right now i am working on that actually yeah awesome can you tell us uh, again like how did you find your new job <laughs> yeah so uh so basically i am working at a place called socket which is basically a company for data transfer between chains any sort of data it can be uh it can be like transactions being posted on other chains it can be like a very simple way to think about this is let's say you have a variable x on polygon and you have a variable y on let's say ethereum and with every increase of x you have to increase y2 but right now they don't have a way to communicate so how do you do that so that's how that's a very very basic model uh, to think about but this will open up like a huge amount of things right now so that's so the <laughs> the story behind how i got into this was uh so i was at polygon uh, i was up the pandemic and the lockdown had ended uh i was traveling back to bangalore and to find a place and at the same time uh babo who is the co-founder of mine my uh, co-founder of socket and rishab rishab is a college friend of mine uh me rishab were talking to each other like trying to find a place and that's when babo also was trying to find a place and we fortunately got together and found a place in bangalore so that's like that uh we had a flat number called L71 which is like we call it the home of socket like that's where actually socket started so yeah that's how i met people and webo got introduced to web or uh, rishab rishab and webo started talking about things and they started socket uh i was living with them for about a month or so when working in polygon and at that time i used to see uh, look at them doing stuff on uh, whiteboards and stuff and at one day while just drinking tea i just asked him to like, uh, take me into so that's how i got, got in okay yeah. cool. so i'm just wondering probably this will be the first thing yeah. that people will be thinking about when i'm watching this so for both of your web3 jobs you know you had a you know a connection with people you know just yes. you, somebody introduced you or you were introduced to the co-founder of the project Right now, how is it nowadays? Do you think, like for example, you know, just when mm-hmm. people are hired in Web three, I mean, they are now in a traditional, you know, and an, another uh, role, uh, and now they wanna go into yeah. Web three. Is it again still based on these personal relationships? Do you think, or how do you see people finding jobs? No, actually, 
it's not like uh, relations because uh, i'm pretty sure like people are getting into web3 right now through no- normal job portals at that point the number of companies itself were very low like at least in india there were like very few to get into i don't know about the other countries but uh, right now it's the normal entry process like you can just like the good thing about web3 is people won't look at your uh, experience a lot because they know that people coming in won't have experience a lot of a lot of experience in web3 they they will still uh, try to ask you web2 related questions or just try to talk to you about uh any anything that they have built so that's how even our process of interview is also similar to that where we try to talk to talk to people see how much they know about blockchain how we mo- mostly gauge like uh what are their interests and is he coming into blockchain just for just for coming in or is he like wants to try wants to try and learn new stuff or it it might be that he might not like it and he can go away but that's fine but uh we look more for curiosity because the important thing to remember um, in web3 is the space has been growing immensely so the speed of things matters a lot so by speed of things i mean the iterations are like huge like it's not a a uh, normal process where you you take like two sprints to build out a feature like right before coming here we release like six integrations today itself uh, which were like started only like we worked on it for two or three days so it's the speed is actually what matters so trying to keep up with uh, stuff is where what we look at so basically let's say uh, a person comes in and takes like one month one and a half month to prepare after that let's say for by prepare i mean like he gets into stuff he reads our code he understands what we are what we are doing and from there if he doesn't understand he has to ask questions if he does not ask questions and the things are not moving then it's like not very appreciated i'd say okay this is so great the speed is what matters yeah okay okay so when somebody comes into your door then i mean you look at yeah. their experience and everything but you look at the curiosity and are they going to yep. keep up with the change are they going to ask questions to learn stuff and everything yeah. and i'm wondering how much is it important for a web2 developer to know blockchain very well or to know the programming languages or like those kinds of like you know just how much do you look for those like specific web3 knowledge or is it something like you are like okay you will learn it here anyways if you are a web2 developer yeah uh yeah so apart from let's say um, so if you go into like very very niche things like se- se- solidity security or contract security that would require like a lot of experience to like think out cases and stuff but think of it like this like in web3 most of it is javascript most of it is javascript rust everything is like normal web2 based stuff it's just that the uh, interactions with blockchain is the only part that you have to know because the interactions is in bytes so so basically think of it like this like once you come in uh you start with normal web3 no, normal js stuff you will understand everything then there will be t- tutorials there will be library so uh you won't be like uh overwhelmed i i would say it, you you would be on, only overwhelmed by the concept of blockchain because it's very new to think about like decentralized things going out in the world so that's the only overwhelming part but i don't think code will overwhelm you at all because it's mostly javascript rust any any normal programming language is because once you let's say let's say even if you're starting uh, solidity to write contracts or any sort of language to interact like posting on blockchain or anything you can think about in, it in a normal way as you think about code it's just that once you post the code on blockchain you can't change it very frequently or uh, it's not easy to change so 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 while you're writing solidity it's just that you have to think about a lot of corner cases and you won't have uh like a, like a, in a normal web2 company what happens is you push out things you can fix it if there's a bug but in web3 if if you push out things you have to make sure that uh it does not affect people because it's mostly if you push out a wrong thing and a person let's say let's say we are a company who provides like financial services in web3 
So if 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 you do something wrong, you don't have a lot of scope on contracts to modify stuff. So that's the only part I think uh, where people have to be careful because your code is basically responsible for other people interacting, just like in Web two. But if you like if you push out a bug on contract, it's not very easy to fix. Like in Web two, that that's right, sir. Yeah, makes sense. How did you upscale yourself in these jobs? Because I mean, you mentioned Twitter finding the right forums and Twitter content, but it must be also hard, right? I mean, because there is not a lot of like, you can't like yeah. structured content. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So basically, to upscale yourself, that's what that's where I think that curiosity point comes up because uh, to keep up. To just keep up with things, you have to consume a lot of content in Web three because at the start you are like only consuming what is blockchain and stuff. At a certain point, you have to reach a place where you try to search for what are the DeFi applications, like how what are people doing, what is staking. That's how you progress into it. Then you go into like let's say once you reach staking, staking is every like now staking. If if you are in Web three and you are doing normal transactions, transactions and stuff. You will be aware of what staking is, but now if you're a developer, you and you're staking something, you have to like be curious enough to go in, go deep into what is the model of staking the project is using, how are tokens being released into the market, how are these tokens being made, so all of these things will add up eventually into a very in, into a map. Let's say. Uh, To be very accurate, I, I I'd say you have to create a map in your mind, uh, where you relate that this is where I this project was doing this. This might can be applied here too. So to be, uh, very curious about interaction. So if you also in 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 Web three, a developer can't can't be like I won't test and stuff because my from my personal experience. Bringing in Web two testers into Web three is the toughest job that I think I have had till now because testers by testers I mean like testing stuff with uh, wallets and stuff because that is very new to people. So as a developer, you should be very curious about what interactions and how the interaction would look like if a person interacts through wallet and stuff. So this is for like front end or back end. Every developer should be testing and should be interacting with blockchain if you are coding any sort of coding. So that's how you get into, uh, how th- that's how you get curious. Also, I think. Yeah, I mean, this sounds like a lot of work for a developer, and they have to be yeah, big, yeah, yeah. like thinking about a lot of different things. And how did you do that? Like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what kind of resources mm, okay. did you look at? What kind of people did you talk with? Who helped you in the process? I mean, or what kind of resources? Okay. Um. So uh, mostly everything right now I'm doing is uh, backend stuff. Uh, so basically now let's say I have to find something. So there is so one one good good place to find things is like Ethereum stack or just trying out tools. So let's say you are developing contracts. Uh, how do you develop contracts? You know nothing right now. So you have to shadow a person at least. Like someone who's already doing contracts, you do smaller tasks for him. Like let's just say uh, he's building out a hundred line of code, and he asks you to, like you can take up a twenty line of code to just see how it, how this would fit into his code. So that's how you shadow a person. So I I shadowed the friend of mine I was talking about who joined Polygon. So that's and also I think it's it's also a risk reward thing. So you have to weigh your risk and reward. So the first time when I joined Polygon. Uh, a lot of people coming into web to, web, coming into Web three assume that there's a there's like uh, a lot of money and stuff, or you will be paid a lot and stuff. But it's not like that. You have to actually weigh what is happening. Like let's say, let's say you're getting into a new company. Uh, you have to know that knowledge. So if you don't have that knowledge, you have to take the risk to take the risk of just uh. Coming into the company, progressing into a role where you are uh, stable, but shadowing is, I think, the best place to be at because you will be like your work will also go out. You will also see like your work out, and you will also see like what the senior developer is or the 
person who's already doing contracts or doing anything is thinking about so interacting with developers would i would say like takes a huge uh, stress huge like if you're stressed about just starting it just takes out that stress because you're interacting with a senior person he knows and he has coded stuff so you can just think from his perspective or listen to his perspective and go from there yeah i love it that's great and actually this is connecting with my next question so where do you see the chance of more junior developers or like students in the sector uh, versus like more experienced web2 developers coming in um because i hear from my work like a lot of junior developers are like scared they are like oh they are all looking for a lot of experience how am i going to find an internship how am i going to find somebody senior that can help me you know take my first step uh i'm i'm just wondering like what would you suggest to somebody who don't have a you know a work experience in web2 what, what what should they do like should they start from there and then switch to web3 or yeah what what is the chance of a junior mm. person versus a more experienced person to go into this space mm-hmm. chances i think would be i'd not say it would be like very uh, drastically different i'd say like uh, experienced people So as I was telling you that uh, Web three is more about normal infra stuff that you do in Web two also. So eighty percent of my job is to build out APIs, build out uh, stuff to interact with. It's just the contracts part or the blockchain part that is different. So uh, an experienced person can come in and think about scale. A junior developer, because he does not have a scaling. He he did not see scale. I would say like scale. By that I mean like serving to like let's say. Ten thousand requests per second, or something like that. So, so for the junior developer, that's the only thing that I can think about where uh, people can look at him like he's not experienced. But uh, for a senior developer, I don't think people people will look only for their curiosity because everyone knows that people coming from Web two into Web three uh, are new to Web three. So people, I'm pretty sure, like people don't ask questions related to Web three a lot, but they would ask. a lot of questions related to what they have worked on and for junior developers what i think is the best to do is basically try to get into or let's say even if you are in, in a company and you're not you're you're finishing your work very quickly try to ask seniors for more work try to ask seniors for more work that's all i can think of and if you are interviewing for a job you should not have a expectation that you would get the main project or you will you, you will directly be introduced to like uh good stuff in the company because at the start we'll be everyone will be judging you so at that point i think it should it's all based on performance and how curious you are and what you're learning from there so yeah great i i love these like realistic suggestions you know you're like ready to the point i love it yeah because because yeah. i have uh so i don't know if you know about a company called devfolio uh mm-hmm. here in india they also had a they also ran a boot camp uh their dash at the was also quite interesting to be very honest so in their boot camp uh, each developer had a mentor and their mentor could select a project for them uh it was not a, i'd say it was a huge hit in the sense that uh, every developer had a mentor who whom they can interact with but uh, it was not not like a structured thing but if it's structured i think it would make more sense and the other thing that i found from that boot camp was uh these junior developers and web3 the web3 basically let's say uh web2 has apis and stuff and there has been documentation and stuff a lot stuff uh if you are providing apis if you are just a company providing services but in web3 there is a because you have contracts and co- contracts are open you can do a lot of things over them so uh a lot of junior developers that i see start like even my friend started with like dev re- dev relations relations and stuff so he started from there and he progressed and now he's like at a very good place in the thing so dev relations is is a pretty huge thing because uh people think like dev relations as a support thing but it's not like that in web dev relations is basically building out stuff so let's say a company comes to your like uh let's say a company comes to socket and asks us that if this is possible and uh Asks, can you provide a POC? Now the POC they might uh, 
accept or not accept but the devrel guy can quickly just code it out and ship it out so no developer or no uh but but no developer is exhausted no no one like no main developer is exhausted but the guy who's working out this stuff learns a lot of new things and also learns about the other protocol who's integrating socket so this way i think a lot of things happen yeah right now we have an amazing guy in our company who like does like i i know him from 2 years he started as an intern now he's like writing out docs and stuff he builds out poc he does like if if there's a integrator complaining about some bug or something he finds it out himself and thinks me that this this is the bug so really great so nice. that's how i think progress should be made maybe we should talk with him too in one of the youtube sessions <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe maybe yeah. i okay. think i think he'd be best like we have two guys who started from like uh being a mentee and now they are like pretty good into web3 nice that's awesome so my final question to you is so where how do you see the future of web3 are you you know just as a as a developer do you think it makes sense for developers to really look into this space or i mean some people are very pessimistic about the future I, i'm just wondering you are you mm. seem to be a very good yeah. engineer you know just you saw both worlds where where do you see the future of this Hmm. So basically, from a developer point of view, uh, I think from my perspective, I'd say that it is the same. If I was in Web two or I was in Web three, it would have been the same. It's just because what what I believe is in right now, Web three is niche, so domain specific specific knowledge exists in some people, and that is still expanding. So going out towards like let's say in two or three years, a lot of people will will be in Web three and will be. knowledgeable to at the very start in like let's say 2017 or 18 that knowledge was uh only there for a very few people now that knowledge like even your boot camp is starting so that knowledge will also be spread out so these kind of things once they start the network effect plays in so i think web2 and web3 developers should not think as a web3 or web2 pers- in a web2 web3 or web2 perspective but it should just be like uh it's just code so you just have to think like you're a developer and you're just a coder so i i really don't see like any other like difference between a between web3 and web2 from a developer point of view but i'd say like from an industry point of view um uh, i think i i won't comment about decentralization and stuff but i'd say like uh web3 i'm pretty confident is here to stay because it has proven a lot of things right now uh right now i think financially like financial apps and stuff and you can send money from anywhere to anyone these kind of stuff might happen it might be gated in a sense that uh, governments will uh, right now are a little skeptical skeptical because of money laundering and stuff but that should all be controlled once that's controlled i think it's sh- I, i i personally think it would be here to stay uh at least like 20 30 as easily because from my perspective uh, right now uh people think crypto in a very stock market kind of view once that changes i think a lot of people will assume crypto is great okay, okay. uh because one more thing that i i i add is um uh, a lot of people are pessimistic because a lot of companies start in crypto and die out quickly and there's not a lot of regulation so when it's not regulated a lot of a lot of rug pulls happen a lot of uh, companies just shut down quickly but i don't see it being a thing in long term because from me being through two bear markets i know like uh, people building out stuff are progressing in the right direction so yeah i think nice. it is here to stay That's great. Okay, so thank you for this. I mean, I think there was really some good suggestions. We will put your information on Twitter as well. Uh, I'm imagining people to follow you and maybe ask you questions there too, uh, apart from yeah. all these questions. And I would also love to hear the accounts that you follow and you love, uh, so we can also add them to the under the video, uh, so they can find the good yep. resources you like. This was a great yeah. conversation. I mean, if there are a lot of questions coming from our community, maybe we can have you again here for a second session. Let's see, but this was yeah. great. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you.
拜拜。Okay. Bye bye.